I'm here to talk to you about an exciting new feature in DataStax Enterprise called Storage Attached Indexing. DataStax Enterprise has as its foundation Apache Cassandra, which provides you with the ability to handle vast scales of data. But this speed comes at a trade-off. Tables are designed based on query patterns, not in a relational way. So in order to access that speed that Cassandra provides, you need to think about how the data is physically distributed. And to access the data, you'll need the partition key, which tells Cassandra where, uh, where the data is located and on which nodes. So let's look at an example. Let's say that we have a user authentication table and where people can log in using their user ID. Nearly all of the time, lookups to this table will just be against the user ID. But occasionally, people will need to be able to access their account using just their email address. If you try to query this table without the partition key, which in this case is user ID, uh, we'll see this error. Uh, and uh, what this error shows us um, is that, um, that we're not able to, uh, to access the results of this query um, unless we use this allow filtering clause, which technically you can do and add it to the end of your statement. But what this does is it sends out a scatter gather request and has the potential for a full table scan across every node in your cluster. That's bad. And this is why we say that with filtering, performance is not predictable, and this should never be used in production, ever. The best practice for any query that you know you'll be accessing frequently is to denormalize the data into a second table and keep that up to date with the main table. This lets you get the fastest access pattern for Cassandra. But in this case, for this user authentication, we know that this kind of query will only happen sporadically. So adding another table and keeping that up to date would add too much complexity. DataStax enterprise users have the option to enable DSC search, which provides the full power of an enterprise search tool with capabilities like faceting, ranking, relevancy, and more. DSC Search allows you to create search indexes over Cassandra tables and query based on your own search usage patterns. There are some trade-offs to adding this functionality. Resources have to be shared as Solar runs in the same JVM as Cassandra. Mutations have a slight delay as they are first written to Cassandra and then propagated to Solar. And of course, there is the architectural complexity of adding a new enterprise system. For users and enterprises who are looking for a simpler way to query non-partition key elements some of the time, there's now a new option. Storage attached indexing. This is an exciting new feature in DSE 683 and Astra that provides native secondary index functionality with conditions and numeric ranges. Native mean, meaning you don't need to install anything else to, uh, to use it. You can just go right ahead. And there have been previous experimental indexes developed as part of Apache Cassandra, including a native secondary index and a feature called SS table attached secondary index. Storage attached indexing takes some of the architecture and ideas from both index types and extends them for more predictable use. So how does this work? SAI creates indexes on both the mem table and SS tables, and the, index, uh, the indexes live right next to the data. When a write comes in, the new data is indexed in the mem table, which then gets flushed to an SS table and index. There are individual index files stored for each column, and the files contain a pointer to the offset of the actual data in the SS table. And here is the trade-off. Reads will be slower than a read from a core Cassandra table. It is possible that for high cardinality requests or queries of quorum or higher consistency levels, a full scan will be needed across the cluster. And but uh, some of the benefits is that it's very simple to use. You just create an index and specify the type. 
And the configuration uh, for SAI lives in the Cassandra.yaml along with other settings. And when we, uh, when we create the index, we just, use, uh, we just use this command to create custom index. And it also has the options uh, to enable case sensitivity um, and uh, normalization. Uh, we can choose to normalize text uh, based, on, uh, based on Unicode standards. So meaning that any SA will become a C uh, and, um, and you'll be able to access, uh, access text in a familiar way. So let's go back to our previous user example. If we were to create a custom index, uh, all that we would do is again, uh, is just create, uh, create custom index, name our index, um, and add in, um, add in the storage attached index keyword uh, that we would be using along with our options. Um, and then when we go to, uh, go to select the information that we inserted, we would then get back uh, the information that we were looking for. So let's take a look at another example. Let's say that you're building an email service that offers different types of service and you need a table to store that information. In a relational model, we would have separate tables for users, email types, and, and so on. But in Cassandra, this is one way that we could, uh, that we could create it. Uh, different people could have different uh, different account types, um, and so we would store uh, we would store a user mail table uh, that has uh, the data from uh, from all of the uh, the mails uh, mail messages that are sent uh, right there. Uh, and um, our primary key is made up of the recipient ID, the recipient account type, and the create time. The partition key which is this first part of the primary key in the parentheses, uh, is what determines where the data lives physically. And we can see that it's a compound partition key. So we will need both the ID and the account type to access any information. The create time is the sort order of the rows within the partition and defaults to ascending. SAIs can be beneficial for data exploration. While you're still getting familiar with the shape of your data, you can create indexes to take a look at that data. Storage attached indexing has a lot of benefits for many different people in an organization. Developers can start querying with familiar query patterns and can access this, this data without needing, to, uh, without needing to create a separate table and be bound by, uh, by the restrictions of Cassandra best practices. Architects will be happier with a simplified architecture compared to indexing and other search options. And operators will be pleased by the lower impact SAI has on the system, which is significantly less disk space that is needed and configuration that happens in the Cassandra YAML. So check out storage attached indexing, uh, this great new feature that was just released in 6.8.3 and on Datastacks Astra. So until next time, uh, be sure to download DSC, um, or if you're on a previous version, upgrade to DSC 683 and create your own storage attached index. Thank you very much.